I'm Andy Halland and today I want to talk to you about the F601 Flexim Portable Flow Meter for measuring all the flows around your process plant. The F601 also comes with optional temperature inputs. If we put a temperature on the inlet, uh, on the supply and on one on the return, then between flow and temperature we can actually measure energy. Great for using around your chillers, in your data centers, or heat exchangers in your manufacturing plant. You're gonna need a set of transducers to go with your F601, and we do different size transducers for different size pipes. The transducers I'm using on this particular flow rig, it's what we call a Q transducer. You can see it's, it's about this size. When we get to the really big pipes, you might be working with transducers as big as this. You'll notice our transducers have armoured cable for durability in the field. They also have an arrow head and an arrow tail. This is important. If we mount the transducers on the wrong way on the pipe, we'll read reverse flow. At the end of the transducer cable, we have a limo connector. And inside that limo connector, we have a sense prom. That sense prom has stored all the calibration data from when these transducers were wet calibrated at our Berlin factory. Okay, let's go to parameterization. This is where we first start with the meter. And before we start, I'm actually going to put the transducer connected in onto channel A, like so. And you notice the display has changed. It said briefly, clamp on detected. That's it reading in the details of that set of transducers and the calibration. So we're on parameter parameterization. Let's press enter. The first thing it wants to know on channel A is what's the outer diameter of my pipe. Now, if we've gone out with a set of calipers, we can put this in straight away. More often than not, you're on a pipe that's too big. So basically, if we press zero and enter, now it wants the pipe circumference and you can measure that with a tape measure. So we've entered our pipe circumference. Let's press enter. Now it wants to know the wall thickness. Now I haven't shown you, but this same flow meter can also be an ultrasonic wall thickness gauge. We just plug a ultrasonic wall thickness probe into the same meter and we can measure the wall thickness of the pipe. Anyway, we've pre-measured it. It's 1.8 millimeters and let's enter that. Now it wants to know what the material of the pipe is. Now we're on stainless steel. But within the menu, we've got duplex, grey cast iron, ductile iron. There's a whole menu of different materials, and it's unlikely you'll find anything that you're not going to use. Now, if by any chance you're on a weird uh, material, maybe zirconium or something of that nature, other material is where you go. We press enter, and then it asks you for the speed of sound of that material. And we have tables. We can help you with that. Normally we'd be on carbon steel or stainless, something like that. This is a stainless steel pipe. Next, it wants to know if the pipe is lined. Now, if we're on a water pipe, very often we might be cement lined or something like that. Uh, we would go into yes, we press enter, and again, it will scroll us through the materials and we'll have to tell it how thick that lining is. In this instance, no, I have no lining. Roughness, that's a standard feature within the meter. Stainless steel, it knows it has uh, zero roughness on the flowing inside of the pipe. It's not gonna have an effect on our flow measurement. If we were on ductile iron, you'll find a factor there of 0 0.1. Basically, we know that there's gonna be drag on the inside of the pipe. We're just gonna accept that zero. And now we need the medium. On this flow rig, I'm just on water. But within the table, again, we've got seawater, acetone. You'll find a whole number of acids and uh, caustic sodas at different strengths, glycols, thermal heating oils, refrigerants, ammonias. You name it, most of them are in there. And once again, if it's not one of these common menu items, you'll come eventually to other medium and we've just got the speed of sound. You press other and we enter the speed of sound. In this instance, we're on water. 
We need a starting temperature. I'm indoors here, or ambient temperature. I'm starting at 20. And that's it. Parameters are over. So we can scroll across now to measuring. Again, we're on channel A. You'll notice that channel A is ticked. So that's the one we're working on. If we were doing dual channel, we would tick channel B as well. The meter is going to recommend to us two path. That's to say that on this pipe that I'm going to measure on, it's recommending a reflect, two paths. Again, we can override this if we want. It's a recommendation, but normally the recommendation is correct. And it's recommending a distance of 11.6 millimeters in reflect between the transducers. Now our transducers are mounted in shoes and uh, basically the shoes are what help you to space your transducers. The first transducer you can see here, I've actually uh, zeroed the shoe on zero millimeters. The second shoe, basically if you remember, I'm looking for 11.6 millimeters. Now I can't measure 11.6, I'm not that clever. I've set that shoe to 12 millimeters. Here's our second transducer with its clear tail and you can see there's a slot on it for mounting into the cam on this mounting shoe. So our transducers are on the rail, they're spaced correctly, and we're ready to clamp them to the pipe. The gel is easily applied and we really don't want too much. We just want enough to make contact. Pressing down on the pipe and pulling the chain up and then doing the same on this second chain. It might be possible to make it a little bit tighter, always worth doing, and there we go, that's good and solid. Note that I've mounted the transducers at 45 degrees on the pipe. You don't want it along the top of the pipe because if you have any air traveling along inside the flow, that's where it will reside and it will attenuate the signal being transmitted through the pipe and into the liquid. So 45 degrees, possibly even horizontal, is the ideal condition. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. We've installed the flow meters, the, the transducers, and we've been told 11.6 millimeters reflect. There's my signal. Now, when I've got a signal like that, that's a fantastic signal strength. We know this is gonna be a great measurement. However, it's also saying, did I really measure 11.6 millimeters? And as I said, I can't measure that accurately. So at this point, I say no, I installed 12 millimeters. And the flow meter is just gonna tidy up that little bit of inaccuracy. Now I said the flow rig's not on, we're measuring zero flow. Hey, look at that. You might not be impressed, but believe me, there are many clamp-on flow meters where you need to zero the flow meter to zero flow because they've not been pre-calibrated. Let's now open the flow. There it is, instantaneous. On the top display, I'm showing the velocity, and on the bottom display, I'm showing the volumetric flow. I can change that top display to being a totalizer if we prefer. There we go. So we're totalizing and we can see the flow rate in the bottom line of the display. Flow rate at the moment, we're looking at 20.7 meters cubed per hour or thereabouts. So let's have a look at the reference meter. Twenty point five meters cube per hour. Twenty point four, twenty point five. Let's come back to the flexim. Twenty point seven seven. We're near as damn it, Bob on. Well, I hope you found this flow demonstration useful. If Flexim Instruments UK can help you with any of your own flow measurement applications, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can get us on 01606 781420 or sales at flexim.co.uk. Thanks for watching.